Chapter Seven of More Celtic Fairy Tales. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Brandon. More Celtic Fairy Tales by Joseph Jacobs. Chapter Seven Dream of Owen O'Mulready. There was a man long ago living near Balladurine named Owen O'Mulready, who was a workman for the gentlemen of the place, and was a prosperous, quiet, contented man. There was no one but himself and his wife Margaret, and they had a nice little house and enough potatoes in the year, in addition to their share of wages from their master. There wasn't a want or anxiety on Owen except one desire, and that was to have a dream, for he had never had one. One day, when he was digging potatoes, his master, James Taff, came out to his ridge, and they began talking, as was the custom with them. The talk fell on dreams, and said Owen that he would like better than anything if he could only have one. You'll have one tonight, says his master, if you do as I tell you. Musha, I'll do it and welcome, says Owen. Now, says his master, when you go home tonight, draw the fire from the hearth, put it out, make your bed in its place, and sleep there tonight, and you'll get your enough of dreaming before the morning. Owen promised to do this. When, however, he began to draw the fire out, Margaret thought that he had lost his senses. So he explained everything James Taff had said to him, had his own way, and they went to lie down together on the hearth. Not long was Owen asleep when there came a knock at the door. Get up, Owen O'Mulready, and go with a letter from the master to America. Owen got up and put his feet into his boots, saying to himself, It's late you come, messenger. He took the letter, and he went forward and never tarried till he came to the foot of Sleeve Charn, where he met a cowboy and he herding cows. The blessing of God be with you, Owen O'Mulready says the boy. The blessing of God and Mary be with you, my boy, says Owen. Every one knows me, and I don't know any one at all. Where are you going this time of night, says the boy? I'm going to America with a letter from the master. Is this the right road, says Owen. It is. Keep straight to the west. But how are you going to get over the water? says the boy. Time enough to think of that when I get to it, replied Owen. He went on the road again, till he came to the brink of the sea. There he saw a crane standing on one foot on the shore. The blessing of God be with you, Owen O'Mulready, says the crane. The blessing of God and Mary be with you, Mrs. Crane, says Owen. Everybody knows me, and I don't know anyone. What are you doing here? Owen told her his business, and that he didn't know how he'd get over the water. Leave your two feet on my two wings, and sit on my back, and I'll take you to the other side, says the crane. What would I do if tiredness should come on you before we got over? says Owen. Don't be afraid. I won't be tired or wearied till I fly over. Then Owen went on the back of the crane, and she arose over the sea and went forward. But she hadn't flown more than halfway when she cried out, Owen, O Mulready, get off me, I'm tired that you may be seven times worse this day twelve months, you rogue of a crane, says Owen. I can't get off you now, so don't ask me. I don't care, replied the crane. 
if you'll rise off me a while till i take a rest with that they saw threshers over their heads and owen shouted ach thresher thresher leave down your flail at me that i may give the crane a rest the thresher left down the flail but when owen took a hold with his two hands the crane went from him laughing and mocking my share of misfortunes go with you said owen it's you've left me in a fix hanging between the heavens and the water in the middle of the great sea it wasn't long till the thresher shouted to him to leave go the flail i won't let it go said owen shan't i be drowned if you don't let it go i'll cut the wang i don't care says owen i have the flail and with that he looked away from him and what should he see but a boat a long way off oh sailor dear sailor come come perhaps you'll take my lot of bones said owen are we under you now says the sailor not yet not yet says owen fling down one of your shoes till we see the way it falls says the captain owen shook one foot and down fell the shoe oil oil foil oil louis who is killing me came a scream from margaret in the bed where are you owen i didn't know whether twas you were in it margaret indeed then it is says she who else would it be she got up and lit the candle she found owen halfway up the chimney climbing by the hands on the crook and he black with soot he had one shoe on but the point of the other struck margaret and twas that which awoke her owen came down off the crook and washed himself and from that out there was no envy on him ever to have a dream again end of chapter seven recording by john brandon